Fan fiction is one of my favorite forms of entertainment. I love when people take a character that already exists and put them in a different kind of situation that they're, you know, supposed to be in, like taking the Ninja Turtles and putting them in the fucking Vietnam War, putting Super Mario in a Resident Evil atmosphere, taking the Pokemon and putting them into a hunting game. The boundaries are endless. I'm gonna go over the magazines that I created over the years starting in 2015, but before we get into that, I would like to introduce you to Cheese Monkey. Cheese Monkey is a character I created sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s when I was really getting into drawing and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that I'm missing an issue or two because there's no really rhyme or reason to the story and there's different characters happening. A friend of mine, 4-Way Flashers, recently just helped his son create his first comic and uh, it's really cool. The artwork is extremely primitive, but it's fun to look back and I'm glad my dad held on to these things because I talked about these to people and I just, I really wish I could have showed them so it's great to have these still. Now. Getting into the main event, my first actual quality fanzine was called Bluntzilla's Graveyard and I created it in October of 2015. In this magazine we cover all kinds of horror movies that I grew up with. Movies like The Thing by John Carpenter which is a classic and I talk about my history with the film. Dawn of the Dead from 1978 which is a fucking complete masterpiece. We touch on the Universal Monsters Frankenstein and Dracula for a bit. Two very important influential characters in my life we talk about child's play which is of course the chucky films that new chucky movie i actually didn't mind either i thought it was pretty good two anthologies are covered in this book body bags and tales from the hood which are two great films that are definitely worth checking out i also cover the 36 chambers album enter the wu-tang by the wu-tang clan amazing album and i just kind of talk about how i found out about the wu-tang Bluntzilla's sketchbook and way more is actually bullshit. I never did add the sketches, so this is an incomplete version. For the back covers, I usually just put an old movie advertisement. Or I create an advertisement. The next noteworthy fanzine I created was this right here. Bluntzilla Video Horror Movie Guide. I only go from A till K, but we cover films like American Werewolf in London, The Amityville Horror, Black Christmas, Children of the Corn, Demons... The Exorcist, Fright Night. I list all the available Godzilla films that were released at the time. The Hills Have Eyes, Intruder, Jaws, and ended it with Lost Boys. On the back of this one, there's just a VHS tape, and it's actually not rewound, which is funny. Just this month, I created this magazine right here. I call it Bluntzilla Video Exploitation Cinema and Art Magazine. And on the cover, there's a nice photo of Martin Scorsese on the set of Taxi Driver with some grapes and a gun, which I like. And in this one, there's just random photos. There's no text. It's all photos. We got posters from movies, still shots from movies, still shots from some of my YouTube videos. We got an advertisement for Killogy, which is a great fucking comic book. I included a shitload of newspaper articles involving the video nasties from the 80s and if you don't know what that is just look up video nasties and you'll you'll get a pretty cool little history lesson gotta have jack nicholson screaming wu-tang i included three pages and a fake advertisement from a comic that i'm working on it's very graphic there's some subjective subject matter in there there's no limits when making these magazines you could take multiple images and just put them in any way you want you could use microsoft publisher you could use word which is a pain in the ass. And of course you could use Photoshop if you know how to use it. Having the finished product in your hand is so rewarding. I included the logos of the movie theaters that I've been going to since I was a kid. Rainbow Cinemas, Landmark, Mustang, Highland Cinema. This magazine's last page is art by Shohai Otamo. There's artwork from his father, Katsuhiro Otamo. The back of this one I tried to be slick and I put the like a film cell from the Chinese Connection and a couple of little logos that you might understand if you're in the know this fanzine right here is actually a tv guide that was unfinished it was used in the short film that me and my brother created called misguided in which a tv guide fucks this guy over twice you should check that video out i included all kinds of things that i would like to see on a tv guide like lucio fulci zombie happening at saturday at nine the french connection texas chainsaw massacre the shaw brothers marathon and on the back, there's an advertisement for Dump District Video, which is a fictional video store that does exist. It's just not an actual business. The last fanzine, but not the last thing I have to show in this video, is Bluntzilla Video, the John Woo special. If you're not familiar with John Woo, he's responsible for directing The Killer, Hard Boiled, Hard Target, Broken Arrow, Face Off, tons of films, 
lots of fantastic classics in his library. In this one, I started off the first page with some gaming material that I grew up with. My friend Mike actually had that Terminator 2 arcade machine in his garage. NBA Street Volume 2 is another game we played the shit out of. Random Chainsaw. We got the back patches from various gangs from the film The Warriors. More movie posters and concept art from The Exorcist, which is fantastic. A great photo of Malcolm McDowell as Alex Delarge from The Clockwork Orange getting his ass kicked by the cops. This is a schematic I believe drawn by Mike Plug, showing how the spider effect will work in the thing. A microwave massacre and motel hell poster right next to the logos for Fangoria and famous monsters of Filmland. The last page only has three photos from John Woo's films, but those are my favorite films. In hindsight, I should have included more John Woo material, but you know what? Fuck it, it's my magazine. And that's the point. With these magazines, you can do what you want. There's no rules. Just have fun. Now this really is the final item of the video. Earlier I showed the comic book art from the story The Elevator, which involves, you know, the old lady getting killed in the elevator. Or does she get killed? Stay tuned. Anyways, this is another comic that I've been working on right here called The Mad Mopper. In the 80s, my dad was a janitor at a mall. And he won the title The Mad Mopper. The story is complete, but I haven't finished all the artwork, so this is only half the story. But by the end of it, you will understand why it's called the Mad Mopper. Eventually, I'll redo the art and include it in a fanzine. My goal is to create one of these fanzines with content that is entirely created by me. Artwork, text, covers, logos, all that. That's it. Now you know how to make a fanzine. Well, you might not know how to make one, but you know how the fuck I make one. With that being said, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and have a lovely day. Ha ha ha!